The following program is sponsored by Capitec. Better never rests. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Insider SA, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to the mindful side of Miss South Africa, Natasha Hubert, as she and her family share the hurdles she's overcome. Fashion designer Mzukizi Mbane makes a dazzling debut in homeware. To chefs Craig Cormack and Buda Toy, salt is the superhero of cooking. Township entrepreneurs grow their startups into engines of prosperity. University sweethearts Kyle Singh and Leanne Naidu are wed in a magnificent Hindu ceremony. And TikTok sensation Chad Jones's mum and dad, Gail and Wayne, help him reach 3.8 million followers. Last year, we met software developer turned social media content creator and TikTok sensation Chad Jones. Since then, his fan base has leapt from 2.5 to 3.8 million followers. And mindful of the role his mom Gail and dad Wayne have played, he invited us to meet them. <laughs> What's up guys? Coming through you just in time. I'm about to teach my parents to dance. But yeah, welcome to the Jones household. When lockdown happened, I discovered TikTok. So actually before lockdown, I didn't know what TikTok was. I wasn't heavy on social media. I was that computer nerd, you know, just decoding stuff. Got into the video, asked, asked them if they could join me just for family fun, you know, get some exercise. It seemed fun at the time because people were doing it. And then once I started um, incorporating local music, it just a snowball effect and here we are today. Uh, 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 uh. One, two, three, uh. I would say they are the reason why I am who I am today in the social media space. It's because of them. I owe everything to them. If they weren't with me, I'd just be some random guy by myself dancing, I guess. I mean, it wasn't a strategy to incorporate them. It was literally just for fun. But now going to the malls, we see how many families we've impacted and inspired. They are a huge, huge part of it, if not the biggest part of my social media. Five, six, seven, eight. Da, 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 da. I wasn't really into the dancing. I'm more of a sports type, so with, with Chad showing us the dancing, I thought that's gonna be a bit hectic and crazy. But then obviously he said to us, no, no one's gonna see it and you know, on social media or anything. And after that, there was almost like 50,000 followers and I just freaked out and that's all I could say. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It was such a hectic. We feel like a big family because everybody's calling yeah. me mommy, mamzo, and there's daddy, and it's yeah, it's, it feels like a. We've got a big family. Big family out yes, there supporting, supporting us. us. So it's it's cool. Chad has really taught us well. It's tough at times, you know, when we're doing the practicing that, and it takes us hours. Yeah, I do find it still tough and he grinds us a lot. He's pretty strict, yes, but <laughs> he's strict in a good way. We got it. Okay, so we just finished Learn the Dance and let's just show you around our city. Keeping up with the Joneses is exhausting. Turning Abeja into their stage, they've become legends in their own town. Her grandmother was from China, but here, the three of us, born and raised Port Elizabeth, um, we don't speak a word of Mandarin. They fluent in Afrikaans. Um, I can speak a bit of Afrikaans and a bit of Tlosa as well. So yeah, we're proudly South African, but you know, we still keep our roots as well. Dancing does come naturally to me because it's in our family. My late mom and dad, they did ballroom dancing. And ever since Chad introduced us to this, I'm a piano. I mean, it's been fun. Lots of exercise and you know, different moves. We, yeah, their muscles we enjoy it. So they get used to it, you know. But we enjoy it. Now they're pretty used to it, muscle memory, so they know all the moves. I've done ballroom dancing before with, with my wife and everything, but um, the moves that Chad gives us, it's quite stressful for, on my side because uh, the easier dancers I seem to battle with and the difficult ones I seem to get quicker. He fights through the dance. <laughs> yes, and I try very hard. I try. I, I There's try. no emotion, it's just focus. Yes, no emotion, no smiling. That's what they say. I'm, I'm like very, yeah, you know, yeah. cross when I dance. 
I don't think there's competition between me and them. I think <laughs> it's mostly between them two. Because and whenever those are posted, uh, we like, okay, Gailey, how many views did you get? And then mom would be like, oh, how many views did you get? And I'm just in the middle like, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's nice. The dancing has made our family bond stronger. You know, we, we sort of like with the Yama Piano music and that when we hear it, we can relate to it. And, and then Wayne would say, I know this dance. I remember this dance and, and it brings us closer. So we've got something in common. This is now a full-time career for Chad. And with a following he boasts, his new branded clothing line has its own market. The logo was designed by my sister. We didn't want it to be too hectic, but it was simple and fun as well. I think we've posted like one or two videos wearing it and people have been asking because we haven't officially launched it yet. These right here are all just prototypes, so you guys are getting a sneak peek. We also got to watch Wayne and Gail prepare an authentic Chinese meal you don't get at your average takeaway. Uh, food in our household today is a very big role. I mean, we. I think we're all foodies. Um, that's where I got it from. It starts from like my gran. So back in the day, we used to have these like, when all our family was here in PE, we used to have these like huge Sunday lunches. So I think my, my grandfather is like one of 12 or 13. So you can imagine how big all the cousins and my, my parents' cousins. It would, it would kind of be like a competition between the aunties of who like makes the best dish and obviously we we just there like feasting on everything and it was like different types of food from like the red pork. It's like the traditional Chinese dishes that you don't really get in um, restaurants. So for lunch today, it looks like they're making a chicken chow mein with some mixed vegetables, snappies, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, and then the mian, the noodles. So I think they marinate the chicken first in like some light dark soy sauce. There's garlic in there. I think they're gonna put some oyster sauce as well, and then they just fry it together. The Joneses were already proud of their son as a karate world title holder and software engineer. Then he had to go and overachieve. Well, watching Chad grow in his social media dancing career has really made us proud of him. We stand by him 100% in whatever he chooses. So long as he enjoys himself and Chad has set goals for himself. So we're very proud of him. What it means for me to have them involved in my life like this, it's, I mean, you can't ask for more. And for me, family comes first. Them being a part of my life, a part of my job, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better job. Plus, you enjoy all the chicken chow mein you want and never put on weight. This dancing gig is great work, if you can get it. Up next, a South African Indian wedding and a dazzling decor range that's unmistakably African. Leanne Naidu has an actuarial science degree. Kyle Singh is a financial engineer. While their heads for numbers may have helped them navigate the maze of true love, it was chance which played the matchmaker. We met at Fritz University, so I came up, you know, from Peter Marisburg by myself. We had a large friends group where we got to know each other a lot better. And I think as time went on, I grew closer with Leanne when I finally asked her out. And um, you can call us uh, university sweethearts. From there, we just grew closer. I appreciated the qualities in her. She's very loving, caring, family orientated, which is a big thing. And we grew from there. We've been together for seven years now. I actually saw him first in a maths lecture and I told my best friend at the time, that's a good looking guy. But I didn't have the courage to actually go speak to him. Uh, she went and became friends with him. And then that's how we started our friendship group. Mindful of their heritage, the couple asked Prishani Mora Gavit to ensure that their wedding upheld tradition. 
So Leanne contacted me a while ago to consider the planning and coordinating options. And the brief that both Leanne and Carl gave to me was to stick to the tradition, to keep their heritage, because it's so important to, I think, all couples in South Africa getting married and to find the balance between their South African heritage and their Indian heritage, which is what they wanted for their wedding day. So the Indian wedding scene in general is just a big celebration of so many diverse cultures that come together. And I think that's what makes Indian wedding such a celebration. And that's why everybody enjoys it so much. That's why it's so unique as well. There's so many moving parts to it. And every small step towards the wedding day is a tiny celebration in itself. Our wedding is a traditional South Indian wedding with a modern twist. It's centered around family and love and creating memories together. I'm looking forward to walking down the aisle with my dad and then also after the wedding as a married couple going back up the aisle. I've done my mainly two days ago and this is where we do designs on the hand using henna. So I've added a few details just special to me. Firstly, I have my mom's name. She is late and then my dad's name on this arm. And then Kyle's name is hidden in my mainly and he is supposed to find it. The groom had some fantastically intricate detail of his own woven into this impressive ensemble. I think the output was more to complement my wife. So the cream and the red goes well together and it was an Indian outfit. So these are um, gold flowers embroidered onto my uh, outfit with kurta and I'm wearing a white pants as well and Indian shoes. Oh, and this is this the turban. And um, yeah, this is just traditional. Uh, you go to ceremony with it. So it also matches the output as well. I am wearing a red and gold sari, which is traditional for a South Indian bride and a headpiece with jewelry, all South Indian designs. Uh, this is very auspicious Hindu wedding ceremony. So the function is based on Hindu, that is in a Tamil and the Hindi and Gujarati, and we're doing it in the Tamil way of the wedding ceremony. The main part, that is the highlights of the wedding, that is we do a Thali prayer. The Thali symbolizes Mother Lakshmi, then different forms of Lakshmi in our Hinduism. One form of the Lakshmi, it's called the Mangalya Lakshmi. So that is called the Mangalya Puja. We do that prayer. Once we've done the prayer, everybody bless that Thali, especially by the parents and the great grandparents. And once we've done that one, we tie the Thali and we put the three notes for the bride. Then we put the exchanging of the garland, then wedding ring, then that symbolizes the marriage. Then we put the touring that also symbolizes the wedding. Once we've done that one, get the blessing from the parents, then we conclude the wedding. It's important to preserve our culture and traditions so that the information flows from generation to generation. From my side, I think it's very important. It, it's also a culture. It's, it's more than that, it's actually family because you do it together. So it's very important for bonding. It's a way of life as well. So religion, I feel, is important for families. So the ceremony today was absolutely beautiful. Leanne and I have been talking and planning. I've been hearing her plans for like almost a year now. And to finally see everything come together, it was just magical. I wish Leanne and Kyle all the happiness and all the love. I know that they are going to do great together. Leanne is like a sister to me. So, yeah, she's my sister. <laughs> so that is it. Yeah. And I, we just love them. As business brains, their financial future looks good. But what else excites them? The most I'm looking forward to is the actual um, cooking because I've been cooking myself for some time and she's a really good cook as well. So I might not be as thin as I am today. Uh, might get a lot fatter and just um, being with her and she's my best friend. So I'm um, just spending doing the things we love together. In my marriage, I'm looking forward to many adventures together and just many journeys and life, basically doing life together. With a combination of their shared heritage, faith, friendship, and yes, fine Indian cooking, these two seem to have hit on the perfect recipe. Now to a wedding of fashion and decor. 
When designer Mzukizi Mbane moved to Joburg from Cape Town, he was so excited that he had most of his furniture custom-made. It reflects a time in his life where he is more invested and interested in what he puts into his home and in the people around him. Hello Insider SA, my name is Mzugi Simbanya, founder and the creative director of Imprint South Africa. I have beautiful and exciting things to share with you today. Let's see. Imprint is very excited to announce that we finally have our homeware range, something that we've been building on and working on for such a long time. So this range was created for people who just want something different. So making sure that you stand out, that's what we do with clothing. So even with the furniture, we wanted to sort of like carry that same aesthetic and the same message throughout. So it's for someone who wants a conversation piece. So when, when your guests enter, they can say, okay, this is different. The couch, I've never seen anything like this before. And that's what we want to do. We want to create those conversations and also want to just inspire people to celebrate African identities. When it comes to sourcing of the fabrics, uh, it's always very important for me to make sure that everything is, is sourced locally. Uh, we design the prints locally, we print in Cape Town, we manufacture in Johannesburg. So uh, we have this beautiful concept of our contribution to sustainability. In no time at all, a quick remake of Mzukizi's lounge showed the power of this range to transform a space. Homeware is not something that I've, I've recently uh, come across. I've always been inspired by the idea of creating pieces that are different. In my home, all my beds are something that I've designed and had them custom made. My coffee table, my couch, my dinner set, like uh, everything in my space. Even before I, I had this idea of creating a homeware range, I've always wanted to create pieces that are specific and different. I think it's also very important to sort of like understand that fashion doesn't live separately from the home. For me, it was very important to make sure that the two worlds are always connecting, either in the prints, either in the type of lifestyle, or either in the type of clients that we want to sell the clothing to, we're selling the, also the, the furniture to. The brand is all about that African aesthetic and African identity, and that incorporates a lot of color. And I know a lot of our people, a lot of our clients are always celebrating the fact that we are so bold and we are so bright. And this is one of my favorite colors. Yellow is such a beautiful, happy, playful color. And yeah. What began as a collection of rugs soon included a range of furniture and materials as much for the bedroom as for the living room. In the bedroom, we've also introduced pieces from the homeware. We have the couch, we have the ottoman, the rug, and cushions. The idea that the pieces are not just living in your living room, but also can be incorporated into different rooms in the house. And also just introduce the idea of how versatile all these pieces are. It was very important for me to work with fabrics that into the homeware space, something that's more stronger, luxurious. If you look at the couch, we have the velvet incorporating that element of luxury, but still very durable and very strong. For the ottoman, we kept it to the outdoor linen, something strong, something durable, but also gives the people the, the idea that they're part of the story. We've always kept it to the monochrome and the primary colors. So your blues, your red, your yellows. It became very important for me that when we launched this collection, we launched it with those beautiful colors that people are familiar with. Colors that make them feel like it's still not such a jump from fashion to homeware. This focus on the home comes just as Mzukizi's fashion line is gaining even greater traction at International Fashion Weeks, and he's been busy on that front too. Our latest collection is called Ikaya, a home. We wanted to connect it to the homeware, creating the concept of fashion living in the homeware space. I think this one is my favorite. If you remember the, the, the homeware pieces, the couch that I really connect with, which is the three-seater, we made the dress in the same fabric, which is something very important because we were inspired to create uh, furniture from our fashion range, but we also wanted to sort of like 
create the idea that furniture can also inspire uh, the fashion that we get to create. And in that, we're able to manipulate the fabric, we're able to create structure, and we're able to create this beautiful queen dress. Something that's very important for me is always about the roots, connecting it to where we're from. And in Gomu Yabengo, it sort of like symbolizes or makes it, feels like home. It really becomes Ikaya with that traditional Ngomo Yabengo. We have the swimwear piece and looking at the print, uh, connecting it to the concept of Ikaya. We have the ladies in the middle, which we call the sisterhood print, just uh, ladies coming together, something that we all grew up around, our mothers, our aunts coming together, dressing up and having that beautiful concept of sisterhood. Keeping parts of both ranges affordable is bringing all of the brand's fans along this new journey. Uh, this new collection means a lot for the brand. It means us entering into a new space, a new industry that we were not part of. The furniture industry is totally new for us. So there's a lot of opportunities to learn, opportunities to grow, and also connect with new people. But also just the concept of Ikaya for me, it allowed me to express myself, to grow, and to sort of like discover that I'm this creative. So to do it home and to do the fashion collection and merge it together, it's a beautiful way of reinforcing the concept of me being home in creativity. Some of us wear our personality boldly. To others, home is where we find the freedom to express ourselves. Mzukizi Mbane has us covered on both fronts. Just ahead, two chefs take the West Coast's finest hand-harvested unrefined sea salt to the world. Sponsored by Capitech. Better never rests. While the West Coast is famous for its diamonds, two South African chefs have discovered another kind of treasure here. These gents are mindful of what and how we eat, as well as which products are natural and sustainable. And in the local sea salt, they seem to have found all the answers. Hi, Insider. I'm Craig Cormack. I'm Buda Toy. We are two chefs in love with salt. Today, we're visiting our favorite supplier on the West Coast. Come and join us. Let's go. This salt over here is probably the most amazing crystal. So if you kind of have a look at that beauty there, this is one of the beginnings of salt for me in a sense of seeing the beauty, almost like a snowflake on steroids where it gets harvested as its first formation. But this is known as fleur de sel. It's that first formation on the actual salt pan before it goes into little crystals and salt granules. So this is where it all begins. From the ocean to the salt pans around you, it takes about eight months for to get seawater into salt. And this here is what we call sea salt. It's one of about 15 production methods in the world where salt is made. My journey with salt began 15 years ago at a dinner that we did, and we turned this into an experience. That experience became a four-course tasting menu paired with food, wine, and salt. And from there, it's just grown and grown into the massive business that it's become today. In 2007, I worked at a Thai restaurant and I fell in love with fermentation, preservation and cooking methods that is hundreds and thousands of years old. And it led me to one mineral and that is salt. It is the key thing that binds all of us and it just made sense. I came back to South Africa, realized that I've been cooking like this for years, but I didn't think about it. It was a natural progression to where we are now. So what you see over here is our fleur de sol production. It's the last pump over where we reach that saturation point that salt needs to be at and you get that beautiful pink hue that runs through that crystal. And we don't realize in our everyday life how ingrained salt has become. The word salary, something we earn every single month, comes from the word salarium. And that is you were paid your weight or your worth in salt. For even longer than that, this coastline has allowed locals to put dinner on the table and Craig and Bew proudly continue that tradition. Picking mussels because we are on the west coast. It is one of those beautiful things that South Africa has to offer. I need to find them. The tide is low enough so I can spot a couple. And tonight we will make a little mussel poiki. So we're going to take all the traditions of South African cooking. There's going to be fire, there's going to be mussels, there's going to be wine, and we're going to be happy. 
this is going to be so awesome. Most people just steam the mussels with some wine. We're going to add some kelp in there. It gives that lovely minerality to it. You'll find the wines from here are also very mineral. And this year will just perfect that. And then obviously, we can't just leave it at that. Uh, we're going to have a bit of fun with our picanha steak because I think this is just going to add so much flavor to that dish. Uh, my decision to partner with Bo was we chefs well in our own rights. We have totally different viewpoints on food as a whole. He has a love for the fermentation process and various other techniques. Mine is hunting down amazing salt salt pans and it just made sense. Successful porridge, we're going to go and meet the winemaker. With that, a notorious West Coast mist rolled in. Though winemaker Jan Ponk van Sale has come to make the most of this salty sea air. I tell you what, I'm yeah. freezing as I'm standing here. This morning it was 30 odd degrees, and now I can't believe the change. One of the reasons we're here is a story about the salt on the grapes. Can you please tell us a little bit more about that? When we started, we saw that there's something that hinders the, the vineyards, and some of the leaves got leaf burn on the sides. So I was very worried, so I had the leaves analyzed, and we found that there was sea salt on the leaves, and it comes on the wind. So um, what I did, I put in one hectare of sprinklers and I put fresh water through that, washed off that salt, but only on one hectare. The other three hectares didn't have sprinklers on. And after two years, nothing happened with the others also. So I took the sprinklers away. The vineyard seemed to adapt to the salt situation, amazingly. And it, it, it reflects in the wine. The older the wines get, the, the Bambus Bay range specifically, you get a salty minerality on the wine. And the older it gets, the more you get that. So that's why it goes so well with any sea product, any seafood, um, when you prepare any dish. Okay, and speaking about the salty wine, I've got it here. This is the Bambus Bay Sauvignon Blanc, and it comes from this vineyards out here. They are very unusual, almost quite minerally, and, and a hint of sea. I think this will go very well with our abalone stir fry that we're going to try today. A little bit of sweetness, yeah. a little bit of acidity, Definitely. and then that richness from our fish sauce and soy sauce. So yeah. Fishing, farming, or cooking in these conditions demands a rugged spirit. And having decided that morning to braai, the guys were going through with it. I'm preparing a stir fried abalone. Okay, so I've got my onions and my garlic nice and brown. I'm getting the abalone in. I'm going to give them a nice quick sear. I want them dark, beautiful brown color on each side. Then I'm going to season with palm sugar, tamarind, and then we're going with a fish sauce and soy sauce, basil, and our dish is ready. Finished. As simple as that. Finally, in this madness of weather, I'm prepping up my calamari dish, which I just call salt. The trick with calamari is literally you just want to give it a nice quick work through. You don't want to let it sit too long. They get very tough very quickly. So as soon as they start curling up like that, I'm really just going to take it off. All right, so I've got some uh, chorizo, which we're also just going to take on the grill here. And then what I'm going to do is just add in my olives. They're a little bit sweet. Uh, the green one specifically, not chalara. I'm going to add in my capers, pop that in there as well. Then I'm going to take our lovely sweet Kalamata olives, which are really delicious and release great flavors in there. Then we're going to take our squid heads, add those into that. And there we go, pop that into the fire itself with a little bit more intensity and heat. And then lastly, I'm going to add this lovely flavor, almost a tomato s'more, because we're on the West Coast. I thought nothing better to finish that base plate up. Take all those wonderful ingredients, bang it on the plate, a little bit of garnish, and we're good to go. So roast picanha with a kala namak, which is a black Indian salt, very high in sulfur. Special salt for us, we love that salt, probably one of the best ones that we got, and tastiest ones. Sear my meat on the fire. So you've probably seen someone wrap steak or burevors in newspapers. We're on the west coast, we saw kelp, and we went, today we are wrapping our picanha in kelp. We did not know what we we're gonna do this as we arrived, but it will work, so what I'm going to do Wrap the steak in kelp, it's going to protect it, it's going to have that beautiful salty, salty sea taste to it, and I'm going to throw it into our flame on the left hand side. My final dish for today is going to be the beautiful West Coast mussels that we picked this afternoon. I've also got some of the kelp then, which we're going to basically slice up into little julienne, if you like, for no better word. And then from there, we're going to uh, add that in. And that's going to give it a little bit of its own saltiness. And so that's the important part, where we let all that steam come and let those mussels open up and then go from that side of thing. Uh, so it should open up everything. Mussels will pop over, it will be delicious. We don't let them cook too long. It's all about timing. 
Both of these chefs run successful restaurants, but they'll cook anywhere, under any condition, to spread their food philosophy. My legacy, I think I'd like to be known as the Soul Chef. I've spent 15 years working on this concept and this brand, trying to build something unique, something special, something with integrity, something with uh, an everlasting understanding where people actually look at salt uh, in a totally different way. We eradicate all commercial salts and we bring in the salts that are either boutique or dirty salts or natural occurring. And my ultimate collection is just sitting at 225 salts from all over the world. I'd like to reach all of them if I can, and then obviously create a television series or a documentary on salt. I think that the people who have been here have been doing a lot of work that they have been doing for me for the first time, but that is very, very good. And I have been doing a lot of work Sus aldi kos hospital boleh dek kahit, malas ian dengan waktu mereka ikut stand up dan nandas. Di perlahan mungkin waktu mereka ikut stand up, dekat awak. Sus oh salo medisia, enos waso met school, enos baku man uli mak nandas dek kids anas pun perlahan mungkin. So ikut bayar respect yang kau ikut nandas, for perlahan mungkin. This is awesome. Thank you very much for your trouble going through everything. There's no main dish for me. Everything was super, and everything was very nice. And I think all of our friends here on the West Coast, thanks for you guys that did all the trouble coming through. We enjoyed it very much. Cheers, Ace. Our next step will be opening an international hotel. It is on the horizon. It's happening in the next couple of months. We're very blessed to have this. It came out of being at the right place at the right time. And I think that's how a lot of things work for us, is, is we are at the right place at the right time. But we're there because we see opportunity in pretty much everything. There's never a day that goes by that we won't call each other going, oh, I found this, or I saw that, or something next has happened. And that's what I like in our business, is there's never something too small. There's never something out of reach, because it, it's just there. It has to be there. And, and that's where we approach pretty much everything. And what I would like to do, I mean, I've got a couple of kids. Uh, Greg is, is salt chef. For me, all I want to do is I want to leave a better place than, than what I came into. And that's, that's the focus. Once the most valuable currency in the hands of Buda Toy and Craig Cormack, quality natural salt is making its comeback. Next up, if at first you don't succeed, Miss South Africa shares why you should try and try again. A weekend in the Winelands with her mother Nanette and sister Danielle is some rare spoiling time for Miss SA Natasha Hubert. But having just arranged bursaries for 27 of her fellow citizens to study this year, she welcomed a short break. Hi, my name is Natasha and I am Miss South Africa 2023. So today we are here at Brookdale Wine Estate. I'm here with my family, my sister and my mother actually, which is really nice for a change. Family time is always number one to me. I am a family person at heart. Like it fills my cup. It's where I feel like I can be completely myself. But when it comes to rest, what is rest? So that's pretty much the question. I have been having such a busy schedule the last few months that rest really isn't the priority because I know I have this one year. It's difficult being Miss South Africa. So to be here really does force me to be in a space where I can switch off, not be on my phone and just, yeah, really take it in and try and rest. So to be here with my mother and my sister, it's really my best friends. When I look at my mother, we have a business together, which I started when I was 19. And then when it comes to my sister, throughout both my Miss South Africa journeys, she has been the person literally next to me whenever there's something I want to be done or I need help and I don't have the time, she's always the person I can dial up and say, I really need help. Growing up, I mean, that was really the two women I've looked up to ever since I was a little girl. So being here with them and spending the time with them and making the memories with them is something I will treasure especially in my reign I was like taking my mother and sister to work day Danielle is an attorney Nanette got her law degree at the age of 50 and is busy with her articles alongside the family fashion business 
We started the business when Natasha was still at, at high school. She did some pageants and I started making clothes for her. And at one stage, we decided to take it forward. And when Natasha was 19 years old, she registered Natalia Jeffries. And yeah, when we started working on that, we make wedding dresses, we make evening dresses, day wear, and it's like really a big journey and totally enjoy it. We as a family are extremely proud of her. When all of this happened, I know in my heart, she worked so hard for it. And to actually watch her, to achieve her dreams, that really makes me proud as a mom to see that, you know, when you work for something, you actually get it. For me, my sister is the most resilient person that you will ever meet. She has the most grit and gut that I've ever experienced from a person and just the most wholesome person that you will meet. I think after my dad's passing, the family dynamic just became so close mm -hmm. that we just naturally formed a friendship between all of the members of the family and yeah, just supported each other, encouraged each other. We never, never said big dreams are too big. Yeah, and just be there. If Natasha's father was still here, he would be extremely proud of her. You know what Papa will say is, Tash, jou eister. It was a source of pride for the estate to welcome these formidable women and give them the freedom of the Winelands. Brookdale was purchased by the Rudd family, a family that's very passionate about South Africa. Tim Rudd in particular, the son, has always wanted to have a wine farm. He has amazing knowledge on wine. And in 2015, December, he purchased this beautiful farm. It's a 67 hectare property of which about 29, 30 hectares are under vines, making beautiful wine with our winemaker, Kiara Farmer Scott. When we walked through the vineyard, it was amazing to actually see how these plants can actually just grow in the sun. It, it just goes on growing, it, it gives fruit. And then when we went to the wine cellar, the process that it takes to actually make the wine and how fine you need to make sure that this process is followed to actually achieve the end result, I think that's fantastic. I mean, you really should know what you're doing before you can actually do this. The wine tasting was a wonderful experience. It's so amazing to see something coming from nature and turning out to something that everyone enjoys. And just to see the process, meet the people behind it, meet the heart and soul of everyone that makes this possible. It's really, it feels like home. It has heart to it. You're so comfortable around the people. And obviously the wine tasting was just a bonus on this amazing experience. An added bonus was an invite to join chef Gary Kutzier as he prepared a breakfast of the finest produce from the Pearl Valley. I spent a lot of time with my, with my Oma. Um, she was a phenomenal cook and I think some of my earliest childhood memories are of the kitchen. I then went and did an in-service trainee. So I learned in the School of Hard Knocks. From there, I, I thought I was a little big for my boots and went to try to run a restaurant. And yes, now I'm here working for the Rudds on this beautiful wine estate, learning a lot, enjoying it. They yes, set up the manor house and now busy in the bistro. Good morning. Good morning, Natasha, how are you doing? I'm excited. We start with the continental breakfast, so I thought we'd prepare some uh, fruit. Uh, we've already done the croissants and the muffins, unfortunately. Freshly baked? Freshly baked. I can smell it. So are we cutting up all of these? Are they fresh out of the garden? Yes, they are. Oh, yeah. Of course they are. Yeah. Of course they are. I heard everything here is organic, freshly baked, self-made. Yep. Five tips that you would give me in the kitchen. Five? Five. So one thing that I find, so my, my daughters enjoy cooking, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I, I very often find that they don't read the complete recipe, which obviously it creates a, a little bit of, of an issue. <laughs> for dad? Well, for dad, yeah, if, if you don't get all the ingredients or you're missing a piece of equipment. Another tip, so what we call mise en place or preparation. Okay. Always key, the better prepared you are, the easier it is to cook. Another, I would say, sharp knives are essential. Nice. Always wash your hands. And then also I assume to keep your space clean. clean. So yes, you as you can see. just clean up and... Correct. Love that. Thank you that I can join you. I'll keep those tips with me. Good. Over breakfast, Natasha revealed that determination which her sister so admires in her. One which came to the fore during Miss South Africa. 
So I entered for the first time in 2020 and I was actually the youngest in the top 10. And I know people always say, you know, age is just a number. It really doesn't have anything to do with your age. But obviously knowing what I know now, being 26 years old, it really did contribute to emotional intelligence. Because when I entered the first time, we sat down and we had to do these documentaries. And they said, I'm just going to brief you. It's, it's about your childhood growing up. And I'm like, okay, cool. And it was the day after my father's seven year anniversary. And I sat down and I'm like, okay, so I have a brother and a sister. And when it got to my father, I could not stop crying. And eventually I just knew walking out of Masese that there was a lot of trauma and a lot of things I had to work through. But I went to Miss Universe in 2021 shortly after. And I think that was the big, I wouldn't say wake up call, but the big shift of seeking help. And so there's a lot of pressure that comes with the privilege of competing at Miss Universe. And I didn't make top 21, so I didn't make the first cut. So you do feel in that moment like a big disappointment or not like a great representation for your country. And I think there was a lot of insecurities and self-doubt. And so my best friend said, just go see my psychologist. Go for one session. If you don't like it, you don't have to go back. And I became so addicted to bettering myself, to finding out so much more about myself that by the time that I went back to my South Africa for the second time, I said, if I don't win this, I'll be at peace. Because if this version isn't good enough, nothing will be. And I think that shift of going back in and being so self-assured and so confident of what I have to offer is what I want everyone to feel, that really empowering yourself and not letting a title define you or empower you and saying, now I'm good enough because I won. Knowing beforehand, if this is not good enough, then this is not for me. I believe my, my, my family is proud of me. Literally, when I prepared for Miss South Africa, my best friend, my sister, my mom sat with laptops and we did research on all the stats in South Africa about GBV, education, unemployment rates. So everyone gets involved. Like it feels like we win or we do something together or we fight something together. So to say that they are proud of me, yes, but I'm proud of them too. So I think when I obviously invited my sister and my mother on this trip. I just wanted to really express the gratitude and the appreciation that I truly have for them. So to have this experience with them, to unwind with them is what I feel like they really do deserve. So one of my favorite things is I love the massage. I definitely love that. The food. Oh my yeah. word. I cannot stop eating. I also enjoyed the wine tour, the salad tour. Yes, mm -hmm. Kiara was tasting. Just to see the craftsmanship behind each bottle of wine was amazing. So I think we can establish all in all like we really loved it and oh, enjoyed yeah. it. Definitely. It really filled our cup. But this place, you know, the, the employees and the staff is making this really special and we just want to thank them. I will definitely be returning. Beneath Her Beauty, our new Miss South Africa shows an inspiring depth of character. One that's mindful of others in word and deed. Her reign is sure to be a worthy one. Coming up, some smart financial know-how helps Ikasi entrepreneurs to survive and thrive. Sponsored by Capitec. Better never rests. Last week, we visited the township startups of Luvo Latuka and his tacky wash, met Nelson Mashaba at his gym and Trevor Mochaki at his car wash. Seeing how these entrepreneurs are upskilling their operations with the help of Capitec, we were excited to meet more of them. The Empowered Project directly aligns with Capitec's commitment to bettering lives of clients. And in this aspect, we focus on the financial education component, which then enables us to create well-rounded clients from a finance perspective and from an education perspective. The criteria that was utilized to select the recipients of the Get Smarter courses was mainly focusing on clients that have accounts with us and are also very active using our products. So we focused on people that own businesses that are young or business owners that empower young people through their business. Like Percy Mkwabane, who has big plans to expand and create work in his growing enterprise. My name is Percy Mkwabane. Our main business is Hubli. Our main goal is to open a few more stores. 
what it means to be selected, to be part of the Empowered Project. It's an opportunity, to be honest. At some point, you almost forget about school and you focus on the grind of making it work. But the opportunity to just grow as an individual, I mean, I think we all know that personal development is one of the most important things that one person needs to do for themselves because you cannot lead if you are not equipped yourself. So this opportunity gives me personally that added extra in order to lead the company and to grow it further from where we are. This is changing my perception of how banks should be, how banks should be more human, how banks should be socially conscious of what the environment that they're functioning is. Um, so I think with, with this opportunity, it really creates a perception of not just being a business, but being a bank that is people oriented and is not just there for the sake of making money or being there, but also helping the people that they're servicing. Javora Pudi is another entrepreneur embedded in his community. And what he's learned with Capitec Bank is making his business more resilient. I am running a local tuck shop in Tembisa, and our challenge has to be many tuck shops around us, as sometimes we cannot oppose that competition. Number two has to be inflation. Inflation manipulates our prices. Challenge number three has to be load shedding because most customers do not buy our juices or cold drinks when they are not cold. Our goal as Tepo Supermarket is to make sure that all community members get quality product at a much lower price. I feel fortunate because this project will help us develop skills, business skills on how to start a business, on how to run it, because as inflation increases, Education won't guarantee us a job, so by this project, we will be able to develop skills on how to start a business, on how to run it, on, and on how to manage it. I viewed Capitec only as a bank, but now it has empowered my community by giving us a speed point which charges lower prices than the one we used before. And I managed to build a solid relationship with Capitec because they chose me to do this course. The future of the Empowered Project really lies in us being able to take every client that joins the bank on this journey from day one to day success where they get the benefit of having access to financial educational tools that will help them grow their business, expand and reach their business goals. So the day where everybody can have access to affordable courses such as the ones Get Smarter is making available and the day we can be able to prompt clients and support them from an education perspective, that's when we would have reached our goal and see the interventions that we do actually take the clients and their businesses to the next level and impact their lives positively and the lives of those around them. The spirit of Better Never Rests is alive and thriving in our startups and small businesses. If you have one of your own, or just an idea for one, take the next step to empowering that enterprise with a chance to win a thousand rand courtesy of Capitec. To enter, reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms and let us know how Capitec empowers you to level up using the hashtag Better Never Rests. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Another feel-good production.